Next up, we can talk a little bit about the B2B specific challenges. So first of all, we often get asked if uh, e-commerce is that a B2B or a B2C platform. And uh, more often than not, we will reply that, you know, we're a little bit of both, uh, but we tend to be more B2C oriented, but that's primarily because in B2B, commerce can become extremely complex. So we have a lot of B2B functionality for uh, in e-commerce, but if we're taking the B2B scenario all the way to its extreme, then e-commerce might not be the right fit for the product. But let's go through some of the elements that makes e-commerce a good B2B fit. So first off, we have the complex pricing. So more often than not in B2B, it's a question of getting your prices to your customers. And those price models can be insanely complex. Of course, you can replicate all of these models into to e-commerce, but we will always recommend that if you have complex pricing metrics, then use the ERP as the hub, as the center of the information, and then override the business, the price logic or the price engine in e-commerce and just display prices directly from ERP. ERP controls the structures. That is where the truth lies. So let's keep it there and then just let e-commerce be a access place or a medium for these prices. E-commerce, of course, offers something like differentiated pricing. So a product can have more than one price points associated to it, depending on who's logging in. And we also have tiered pricing. So if a customer purchases up to until 10 uh, items of this specific SKU, then the price is one thing. If it moves between 11 and 20, then the price is a different one. So all of these things is something that comes out of the box with e-commerce, besides all of the stuff that we've mentioned in B2C. Another thing which is very important in, uh, in B2B and can become extremely complex is inventory. So e-commerce doesn't really have a strong inventory story, but we do have a third party app which has been built, which has multiple inventory locations associated to it. So you can run single inventory with e-commerce. That's pretty much just filling out a field in the database. And we have a third party app for third party for multiple uh, warehouse locations. So this is where you can say, you know, this is something that customers typically have and you'll have to do an integration into whatever warehouse management system they have already. So there's a big question in B2B about who owns the business rules. So again, rule of thumb, if you have complex business logic, this should live in ERP. Prices and inventory, they tend to be very complex in B2B and they need to be leveraged real time by the commerce platform. This is why we also have the Uconnector. Uconnector can leverage these prices and the stock inventory as close to real time as you want. Of course, there's a performance issue that you need to take into account as well. And speaking of accounts, uh, you will in B2B, it's typical that uh, you will have a number of accounts in there. Again, this is something that you will need to structure. This can be extremely complex in B2B. So you have like a major account and then a number of sub accounts associated to that major account and rules and responsibilities and permissions and all these kind of things. So it can become very complex. So in this, in this case, e-commerce, we use the account management system, which is being built for in the CMSs that, we'll, that we connect to. And we don't really have an account management system out of the box, but you can build one up with the building blocks that we have. And this again means because we're framework first, you can cater for that specific scenario that your customer have, because that can go from very simple and onto the very complex. Another thing that is interesting about B2B is, of course, the utilitarian approach that many B2B customers have. Because in B2B, the customer and the vendor typically knows each other very, very well. That's an advantage B2B commerce has over B2C, where there's not that close relation between the vendor and the customer. In B2B, you know each other. And that means also that the customer has intimate knowledge of which products they would prefer. So something like quick ordering, something like being able to input the specific S, uh, S, uh, stock keeping unit, the SKU, in some kind of element, then that is a very important feature. 
and also the repeat purchase. So you keep track of what your customer has purchased and then they'll be able to reorder that. All of this is of course possible in e-commerce because we keep all the data available. Another thing that differs in B2B commerce is of course the payment options. Whereas in B2C, it will more often than not be a credit card payment, then you will have invoice payments, you will have uh, tiered payments, you will have accounts. All of these things is something that e-commerce can handle because you can use multiple payment types in the checkout flow. So no matter how complex your payment structure might be, it's something that because e-commerce has the framework first approach, is something that can be ordered, uh, handled in e-commerce. Something like order processing, again, every order ultimately needs to land over in the ERP where it belongs, but in the meantime, e-commerce has an order management system that is easy, accessible, and web-based, so you can use that kind of like an interim step before it actually moves over to ERP to become finalized. You can look at e-commerce order management system as a type of a customer service approach where you can check that is the order the right one that we expect? Is there anything that needs to be changed? Should we get a, on the phone for the customer if there might be some questions? And once everything has been settled, then you can export it to ERP where it will become finalized. Now, the last thing is the customer mindset. And this is one of the things that I think will be popping up more and more over the coming years is that even though we're talking B2B, and it sounds like it's a completely different world than B2C, it really isn't. At the end of the day, a B2B customer is just a person that is also used to working in B2C. So they're used to the service and the opportunities they have at Amazon and ASOS and what have you. So if you're addressing this with a customer, you need to put the mindset in that this is a commerce experience that these people are looking for. It's not necessarily B2B or B2C, but it's a commerce experience where convenience and speed is ultimately the most important.